Have you ever splurged on a beauty product only to find that it sits in your drawer week after week, month after month? I have been the person that has bought all the things. For a long time, I literally worked to buy food and beauty products. And if it was between those two things, I would just eat cereal for a week. <laughs> Cereal section. Guys, look. You think I'm kidding. I'm not, <laughs> I'm not. I've also been the person who got so overwhelmed by the abundance of stuff that I got rid of most of it. I gave it away to anyone who would take it and I kept a teeny tiny minimalist makeup kit for myself with only the very basics. That was actually pretty recently. And then of course, cause I'm a beauty YouTuber, it just started accumulating again. Even being on both extreme sides though, minimalism and abundance, I still often felt like I didn't know exactly what to do with my hair and makeup, or I just couldn't be bothered because it was still overwhelming. In today's video, I'm gonna go through the beauty products that you will always regret buying. These are the things that you think you want until you have them and realize that you really don't. <laughs> Before we get started, I wanna shout out a creator whose video totally inspired this one. We need to give credit where credit is due. I came across an awesome video called These Are The Clothes You Will Always Regret Buying by a creator named Christina Mihas, and it was just amazing. I'm gonna leave a link to her video in the pinned comment below in case you guys wanna check it out. This is my take on the same topic, but in the beauty world, let's go. The first set of products that you will regret buying for sure are eyeshadow palettes in color families that do not suit you. This seems obvious, but it is not. It is so easy to look at a picture of a celebrity and get super inspired by her look and then go out and buy all the stuff to recreate it, only to realize later that the tones don't suit you and you will know that it doesn't suit you because as soon as you put it on, it will feel off and then you'll never reach for that palette again. Does this sound familiar? Who hasn't done this, honestly? Everyone has, everyone has. When it comes to color families, so much of what works depends on your skin tone, whether your skin is warm, neutral or cool, your hair color and your eye color. Those three things create your color family. I've made some videos about this and I could make many, many more videos about this. It's a very complex topic and I don't wanna overcomplicate it for this video. All I wanna say about it is that you will know immediately and instinctively if a color looks good on you or does not look good on you. When you are looking for eyeshadow, blush, or lip tones, Google the celebrities that are similar to you in hair, skin, and eye color, okay? And then look at how they're doing their makeup. Getting inspired by celebrities that look nothing like you is a mistake that I see my personal clients making all the time. Someone who looks like me, for example, will sit in my makeup chair and show me five pictures of Charlie Theron, <laughs> okay? If I do my makeup using the colors that Charlie Theron uses on her makeup, it's not gonna look the same and it's not going to look good because those light pastel tones, they work really well on fair, cool skin and blonde hair, but not at all on warm, medium toned skin with dark hair, right? The reverse happens a lot as well. I'll have like a redhead with freckles, super fair skin. She'll sit in my chair and she'll show me 10 pictures of Kylie Jenner. It's just not, it's not gonna happen, right? What the client should do is look at celebrities like Lindsay Lohan, who are also redheads with fair skin. The easiest way to find color families that work for you is to look at what your celebrity twins are doing. They have the best of the best makeup artists in the world, the best stylists in the world, and they're most likely doing it right. Now, speaking of makeup, I wanna give a shout out to City Beauty who has sponsored a part of today's video. If you've been here for a while, it is no surprise that I am a huge fan, a 10 out of 10 fan of this brand. I love, love their products. And they have very graciously given us another awesome discount code today. If you use my code GLAMGABBY15, you will get 15% off site-wide, okay? Site-wide, which is amazing. One product from this line that I cannot live without, that I use on myself, every single day and i use on all of my clients you've seen it in all of my videos are the plumping lip glosses okay <laughs> if you're looking for a deeply hydrating lip gloss that plumps smooths out lip lines and wrinkles a super long lasting this is a product you will absolutely not 
regret buying. It does come in clear, but it also comes in shimmer and opaque tones. When you put the clear one on, you will feel a little bit of a tingle and then you'll instantly notice your lips not only plumping, but also flushing a really soft pink, beautiful color. When I'm having a natural makeup day, I always reach for this because it makes my lips look so pretty, flushed and full, completely on its own. But when I want a bit more color, I'll reach for the shimmer one. And when I want more of like a lipstick vibe, like what I'm wearing right now, I'll reach for my opaque ones. Some people have asked me about the differences between the shimmer shades and the opaque shades and I, I describe it like this and I think it's a good visual. The shimmers in this line are like sheer pantyhose. It gives you some color but you can see your lips through them and the opaque colors are like tights. You can't see your lips through them because they're full coverage. I use the opaque color nude all the damn time. That's what I'm wearing right now. And I'm constantly getting compliments on it. I will leave the discount code as well as a list of my favorite colors in the description box for you. This is a really great last minute stocking stuffer or just a gift for yourself. So if you want it, pick it up now because a lot of the really gorgeous colors do sell out fast. The second product you may regret buying are hair selling tools with limited use. These are the hair tools that do one thing and one thing only. And it may not be the one thing that you like doing with your hair most of the time, okay? A great example of this for me is the Mermaid Waver. I have two of these. I have a standard size Mermaid Waver from Amika and I have a deep waver and I use Neither of them, okay? I can count on one hand how many times I've waved my hair with these tools. For whatever reason, it's not a look that I particularly love on myself, even if I love it on other people. When you are shopping for hot tools, you have to ask yourself a couple of questions. The first question is, will this hot tool work well with my hair texture? Okay. And the second question is, will this hot tool work well with my lifestyle? Also known as, will I ever spend the time using it? If the answer to either of those questions is a big fat no, then it will probably sit in your drawer. So for me, because I have really wavy textured hair, I need to get my hair smooth before using a mermaid waver or it doesn't look good, right? So question one, does this tool work well with my hair texture? The answer is no. So I need to blow my hair out first and then wave it which is very time consuming. Most of the time, if I wanna add texture to my hair after going through the hassle of blowing it out, I'll add an S wave or a curl because I think that just looks better on me. So that means that I rarely, if ever, reach for my mermaid waver. And then when I do, I usually regret it, right? Because it is so much work to do it on my particular hair texture. And I don't actually love how it works. I would much rather wave it, go through all the work and wave it and actually like how it looks in the end. Another hot tool that I rarely reach for, even though it's a great hot tool, is the Dyson Air Straight. So this tool is a blow dryer and a straightener in one. And even though it leaves my hair super glossy, super smooth, it also leaves it super flat. And I tend to like more voluminous looks on myself. Again, because this tool can only be used in one way, I rarely reach for it. And I spent a lot of money to have this hot tool take up space in my house. Now, before we move on, just remember that this is very different for everyone, okay? If you are the type of person who blows your hair out and straightens it every single day, then the Dyson Air Straight is a great tool that you'll likely reach for every single time you're styling. The point of this part of the video is just to remind you to buy the tools that are good for your hair type and work within the framework of your lifestyle. The third mistake is buying products for your dream personality and not your actual personality. In Christina's fashion video, she referred to this as your fantasy self. And I thought that this was the most <laughs> relatable, true thing ever, okay? In my head, I wanna be this super trendy makeup artist who wears like jewels on her face and like a rainbow mask. Basically, I want to be Nikki Tutorials. I do, I really wanna be her. Every time I go to Sephora, I wanna buy all the glitter, all the bright colors, all the crazy highlighters, and I don't use any of it, okay? For one, I am a mother with two young children. Am I gonna walk my kids to the bus stop in a glitter cut craze? I am not, okay? Secondly, I live in the suburbs in Canada, right? I would look absolutely crazy in my environment if I did my makeup like that. People already think I'm super extra and I'm very simple compared to other beauty creators, okay? Buying products for the person you wish you were and not the person who you actually are just leads you to have a bunch of random stuff that clutters up 
your house. Another part of this is being skilled enough to use that kind of makeup. So if you're more of a makeup beginner and you're buying lots of chunky glitters or palettes with really intense neon colors, you're likely unable to apply it in a way that looks really good. So it ends up being unflattering or it makes you self-conscious, right? After you put it on and then you wash it off anyway, or it just leads you to getting frustrated. Okay. Listen, listen, I'm a makeup artist and a lover of makeup. So I'm not saying you shouldn't go outside of your comfort zone, but think about prioritizing the purchases that you are most likely going to use most of the time. The fourth mistake is buying makeup products that are wrong for your skin type and features. If you have dry skin, you should be looking for foundations that are made specifically for people with dry skin. You wanna look for products that are illuminating, hydrating, or even dewy. If you have dry skin and you use really matte, full coverage foundations, your skin will look flaky and chalky, but the reverse is also true, okay? If you have very oily skin and you use only products for glow enhancement, it will not wear well throughout the day and you'll end up looking very greasy and very shiny. I have to be honest, I'm gonna have an own honest moment right now. I have extremely oily skin and the whole trend this year was very glowy and radiant. So I was using and buying lots of makeup products targeted towards people with dry skin, right? And they did look beautiful on me as soon as I put them on, but they didn't wear well. So I found myself reaching for those products less and less often, especially if I needed my makeup to be super long lasting. And most people want that, right? They want their makeup to last from the morning to the night. So pick the formula that's gonna work best for that, or else you're just gonna end up with another foundation in your drawer that you hardly ever reach for. Another product that this point very much applies to is mascara, okay? Different mascaras are targeted to work for different types of lashes. So a mascara that works well for me may not necessarily work well for you. You might hate that mascara. People with really straight lashes have different issues than people with, I don't know, thin lashes, right? People with thick lashes may want length, whereas people with thin lashes may want thickness, right? So mascara formulas are all very different and they all work differently on different types of lashes. So take your time when you're picking one, look at your lashes, see what the issues are for you, and then choose a mascara that targets that issue. There is nothing worse than being somewhat unhappy with all of your mascaras and then just buying more, okay? I'm guilty of ending up with like 10 open bottles of mascara in my makeup bag and it's just very wasteful. If you wanna know which mascaras are my personal favorites, I posted a flat lay about that on my Instagram, going through some drugstore and some high-end brands to show you the differences and who they're best for, in my opinion. The fifth mistake is buying skincare tools and products that again, don't fit into your lifestyle. There are so many amazing at-home skincare devices out there. I absolutely love my microcurrent device by Zip Halo, and I also really love my red light therapy mask by Current Body, but these are two products that are expensive, they're time consuming to use, and they only work if you use them on a very regular basis. Hair loss products are the exact same way, okay? If you have hair loss and you wanna stimulate the follicles and you're using Minox, which is like a topical ointment, or you're using a laser helmet like the iRestore one, you will not see any difference whatsoever if you use them once in a while. You have to really commit to the time it takes to see results and you have to do it forever because once you stop doing it, the results do go away. So if you're not the type of person who's willing to spend like 10 minutes or even more on your self-care evening routine, every single night and you're just going to chuck this in a cover and then bring it out once a month don't bother buying it okay it's just going to be a total waste of money and you're going to inevitably hate the product not because the product doesn't work but because it's not going to work for you unless you're committed to doing it and you may just not be that type of person right and there is absolutely nothing wrong with not being high maintenance okay there's nothing wrong with that if it's not for you it's just not for you. Thank you guys for watching. Now I wanna ask you something before you go, okay? Answer this question for me. Do you find that you are shopping for a fantasy version of yourself? This was, this was the most mind boggling thing for me when Christina said in her video, are you ending up with lots and lots of products that you don't use because in your head, you're shopping for someone who you kind of wanna be or you fantasize about being, but you just aren't? Let me know in the comments below. This video's over.